Hey, we'll read this version bring you guys first person replay commentary. This is the Pokemon game that I played yesterday on stream. So if you caught it already, this will be the replay portion. Uh, I'm going to upload both of them. So if you guys would rather watch me play the game live, you can do that. And if you'd rather watch me talk about what I did and the things I learned from this game, then you can do that as well. So um, this is a random Pugna game. Uh, or no, I actually picked him. Um, I was playing with Capitalist and a couple other people. Yapsor, Shane, and Wolfman. Um, the game itself ended up being pretty fun. Um, the reason that I picked Pugno was because there were a lot of heroes that were a bit weak to Decrepify. Um, I was playing against a Wraith King, who's quite weak against it, since he wants to attack. Decrepify makes you ethereal like a Ghost Scepter. He wants to attack, he can't attack. Um, I was against a bunch of other heroes. So let me, it's the best way to, what if I just skip forward a little bit to check hero picks? Okay, that's right. So, Lone Druid, a little weak to Decrepify. Wraith King, a little weak to Decrepify. Um, Leshrac is kind of bad against Pugna as well, because Nether Ward is good against Magic Casters. And Sand King as well is doesn't really like dealing with Nether Ward, because it might interrupt his Burrow Strike. So, these are very, very common, uh, very common situations for... Um, that Pugna is kind of good against a lot of stuff, right? Because he's good against physical damage dealers because of the second skill, Decrepify, that I can put on opponents. And he's also good against magic nukers because Nether Ward nukes them and does damage based on how much spells they cast. So against a hero like Leshrac, Pugna's pretty good. Not He can't defensively save himself as well, but against Wraith King, Lone Druid, he's pretty good. So there's a period of time where the nukes kind of just blow you up because Pugna's survivability isn't very high. But at some stage, once you get through that... Oops, I forgot to set up the... My bad, I am black screen right now. I forgot to set up the setting here for this. And there we go, the Dota buff segment. Okay, let's make this a little bigger so you guys can see it. All right, so Pugna is a ranged nuker pusher hero. Um, that's pretty accurate for what he does. Uh, Pugna's skills are this. Uh, Nether Blast does a lot of damage, 325. It does a bunch of damage to buildings as well, and it's a large AoE, and it's on a very low cooldown of 5.5 seconds. So you can actually push like crazy with this skill, doing 325 at level 4. The mana cost isn't that bad at 145. Um, your second skill is called Decrepify. You cast this on allies or enemies or units, and it makes them ghost or ethereal, and it prevents them from taking any physical damage while it's on them, but they do take bonus magic damage. Now, they've been uh, buffing this ability a couple times, um, what it basically does now is it lasts for three and a half seconds at all um, amounts of levels, but the cooldown drastically decreases as you're leveled up, and the amount of slow and magic damage it does to your opponents increases. So I actually personally kind of like maxing Decrep second. I did at this game. Maybe if there's a game where you, your opponents simply just don't have um, any reasons to get Decrepified, you wouldn't max it out, but... I kind of like maxing the ability, at least as a core, since um, you do get levels a little bit faster. But you can cast this on allies. They do take bonus damage, but it doesn't slow them like it used to. It used to slow... It used to do same magic amp to your allies and the same slow to your allies as it did to your opponents. But now it doesn't slow your allies, but it does increase their magic damage, but not by a lot. It used to be a lot. Now it isn't as much. It only has 25 to allies and now up to 60 to enemies. So very good offensively. And keep in mind that the duration is 3.5 seconds and the cooldown is 6 seconds at level 4. That means if somebody is trying to kill you and they can only do physical damage and they don't have a BKB, that means that 3.5 out of 6 seconds they are going to be ethereal, which is amazing. That is 1.5 seconds of downtime, not to mention the cast time of the ability. So Decrep is really, really good at preventing heroes like Wraith King from attacking. Very good against that. One second. My monitor is like falling apart for some reason. I need to get a clip or something that holds it in. All right, I'm going to deal with that later because it's literally not working. Actually, you know what? One second. All right, we are back. I chose to do the pause local recording and fix my monitor. We're all good now. Okay, so what was I talking about? Uh, I talked about Decrep a bunch. Um, I think it's pretty worth scaling to be the, the second thing that you max out just because the cooldown gets drastically reduced. If there's a lot of things that you can use Decrep on, I think this is the way to go. If there's not a lot of things, then it's probably not worth maxing out second. Uh, his third skill is Nether Word. This would be the other ability that you might max second. And the way that Nether Word works is you put another word on the ground, you get to choose where to place it. And it acts as a ward, kind of like a tombstone or a serpent ward. It takes a certain amount of hero attacks to kill it, and it takes a lot of creep or unit attacks to kill it. And what it does is it provides an aura that reduces the mana regen of enemy heroes around it. So if you're standing within its range, it's lowering your mana. 
And then if you cast a spell within the range, you will take a nuke based on how much mana the spell that you're casting costs. So if it's a really high mana cost spell, like if you're playing Skyrath Mage or Queen of Pain or something like that, then you're going to take a lot of damage from the Nether Ward. You can just get killed by Pugna just by fighting in an area. The ward duration is 30 seconds. The cooldown is 35, so it's up almost all the time. And it gets a lot of gold when it dies, so you want to make sure not to feed it. Now, the important thing about this item, or about this, uh, this ability, is that it doesn't scale that amazing. The part of it that scales really good is the mana regen reduction, but no one gives a shit about that, right? So, if anything... The best scaling that this ability does is from the first skill point to the second skill point. Because you're going from 1 damage per mana to 1.25, which is a 25% increase. The next point does less than that, it's 1 fifth. And the next point does even less than that, it's a 1 sixth increase. So you're going 1 fourth, 1 fifth, 1 sixth for each subsequent level up, which means that you're getting the most value from the first level up. For this reason, you can maybe justify going like 2 nether wards. And then getting more decrep levels, perhaps, that might be an option. But the reality is that getting decrepified at level 4 is really where the value comes in. In the fact that you're getting that cooldown to a really low point where it's really, really good overlap. So I think in games where they have some spells, but they're not ridiculously high costing spells, or in a lot of cases, strength heroes usually don't care that much about Nether Ward because they have a lot of HP and some medium-sized spell costs. In cases like that, I think Decrapify Max first might be better. Because again, the damage doesn't scale that much higher. It's a 75% increase. Yes, it can be insane amount, an insane amount of damage. But in a lot of cases, Nether Ward, your opponents don't cast when Nether Ward is up anyways. And they play around it being up. And you can do that with just one skill point, right? And if you do put four points in your Nether Ward and your opponents kill it, all of a sudden... All of your skill points are wasted or if the fight moves away from where the nether ward is then all of those skill points get wasted so um nether ward is in some ways better to have few skill points because if your opponents go in on killing it you know that's not a big deal because it's only a level one nether ward it still does good damage it still is very good range but it's not extremely relevant that it stays alive it does damage it creates a bad team fight scenario for your opponents and it allows you to do other things while it's up. So I kind of like the idea of leaving it at level 1. I think you can kind of get away with this a bit. Just because the damage is quite good already at level 1. It doesn't even dam double the damage with 4 skill points. Which is pretty pretty bad for most scaling abilities. So that's that. Um, Pugna's ultimate is life drain. Um, it's kind of like the mana drain from Lion. And that you're stealing HP. Now there's a couple interesting mechanics things that have to do with this ability. That's really important for you guys to understand. For you to know how good it is. The life drain, what it does is it does damage to your opponents. And however much damage you do to them is how much you heal. So that means um, if your opponents have magic resistance, you are doing less damage to them, which means you are lifestealing less, which is the same way that lifesteal on heroes work. You don't lifesteal based on what your damage is. You lifesteal based on how much damage your opponents take. So if they have physical immunity from Guardian Angel and you're hitting them, you're not lifestealing. Um, if they have a lot of armor and you're hitting them, but it's hitting for a lot less, then you're just, you're life-stealing less. If you do minus armor plus life-steal, you're getting a lot more life-steal because you're hitting extra. So that's how uh, li or life drain works as well. Now there's some other situations where things get kind of crappy. If they pop BKB, you can life drain them because it goes through magic immunity. You can cast it on the magic immunity. But the reality is that when somebody's BKB, they have 100% spell resistance, which means they're not taking any damage from the life drain. And if they're not taking damage from the life drain, you're not healing. So it may look like you're casting it on your opponents, but in reality, you're not. So you have to keep that in mind. Another thing that really messes that up, actually, is uh, is pipe. If somebody has a magic shield over their head, and you're doing damage to the magic shield, it doesn't count as doing damage to the hero. You don't life drain from that. That's another thing you have to keep in mind. That makes it a pain in the butt. Um, I saw another post about it that was referencing something like no field with Rubik and that it might limit your life drain as well, but I'm not 100% on that one. Um, I just know that the, the pipe one was really obnoxious sounding due to the fact that technically you're doing damage, but you're not. So, I don't know, maybe there'll be a Pugna buff in that way. I think it's it should happen, but I don't know if it'll happen 100%. So that's life drain. Um, the range is pretty long. Uh, it goes all the way up to 1200 cast range, which is very, very far. That's two lengths of a, a normal or a long range attack. Um, you can also get an Agon of Scepter on Pugna, 
what that does for him is it le turns your cooldown from 22 seconds to 0 seconds. So every time you cast Life Drain, it's still going to cost 225. But if you keep it going, then you don't have to obviously pay more. It As you cast it, it stays up. It also has this really cool benefit of draining mana. Um, the only way that it drains mana is if your HP is full and you're uh, casting against a hero. So this is one way that you can try to get mana on Pugna. Um, you can just cast Life Drain on your opponent. Uh, and by doing this again, if your HP is full and your mana is missing, then you will gain mana instead of HP. If you're losing some HP, it'll heal the HP first and then heal the mana. So it's a little hard to get mana from the ultimate because it's not very often that a hero is going to be standing around and letting you cast this on them. So you still do kind of need a mana item on Pugna. I think that part's still important. Uh, but I'll talk about that when I get into the actual game. So Life Drain is a pretty straightforward ability, but it does a lot of damage with the eggs. It does up to 300 magic damage per second, which is massive. And that's a pretty big increase, so it can make a big difference. All right, um, very popular skill build. Um, this is by far the most common skill build, but like I was talking about before, I kind of think I like the max decrep build better because you could max it by level 11 here and have it down to the uh, six second cooldown and the super slow of 60% for three and a half seconds. Very, very good slow. If somebody doesn't have a BKB, this, I, this skill is going to ruin their life. Um, Aghanim Scepter, very common. Um, I recommend building Aghanim Scepter. Aether Lens is also recommended. Um, after playing with Aether Lens, I really recommend it as well. Um, Blink Dagger is pretty good. I like that. Boots of Travel, Guardian Greaves. I don't really recommend the mech build. I think that build is outdated. A long time ago, core Pugnas would play like, go like Arcane Mech to make up for the fact that Pugnas HP wasn't very good. But out of the eggs and Life Drain has been buffed so much, I think that's the more straightforward way to play the hero. Now heroes are good against your heroes that spend a lot of mana. Um, OD is a great example, because every time he throws out an orb, it costs him 100 mana. So every time that he attacks, it's, he's going to take 175 magic damage back if the nether ward is up. So that's really good. Timbersaw casts a lot of spells. He's a little bit weak to magic since he has very high armor with reactive armor. So Pugna is pretty good against Timbersaw. And you can also life drain against him. He has no way to stop that, to interrupt that. So you're very good against Timber. A Leshrac, like I played against this game, has a lot of spells to cast. So you're pretty good against Leshrac. I can't believe Lesh is less popular now. It's surprising. Um, Skyrath Mage, also big costs. Lina, Lion, Invoker, Disruptor. All of these heroes have very expensive spells to cast. And they're going to get hit a lot with, uh, with the Dream. Now here's your bat against. Huskar is a great example because Huskar has magic resistance and he doesn't take that much damage from magic. Pugna's only damage is magic, so Huskar is very good at dealing with Pugna. Um, you're bad against Pudge as well because uh, your HP is very low, so getting hooked and dismembered is really bad for you. Anti-Mage can just ulti you and pretty much just one-shot you. You have a giant mana pool on Pugna due to, ha due to having the highest in game in the gain in the entire game. Um, Sniper can just stay far away and ping you away. Uh, Ricky can silence you with his smoke cloud and prevent you from decrepting him. <coughs> Meepo doesn't have to worry about one of his guys getting decrept because he has multiples, so he can kind of just kill you anyways. And Lifestealer has a slight advantage. You can deal with this because you can decrep yourself. But if you already use decrep, then he's just going to slap you around with his rage and he's going to kill you. So whenever you're playing against a Lifestealer, you kind of have to just decrepify yourself, not him. Kind of an important facet there. Um, Weaver, kind of similar thing. You have no stun against Weaver, but he also can't damage you very well. But you also drain his mana with Nether Ward, and you can also life drain him when he's uh, attacking you. So it's kind of even. Overall, the win rate is not amazing. 46% across the board for the average. If we look at the hero meta, aka uh, the better players, we have a the highest win rate is 50% at the 4k mark, I believe. 4 to 5k. And at the 5k plus mark, he's got a 47% win rate which means that he doesn't have an amazing win rate. It's not very good. He's going to probably get buffed again after this next patch. And if we look at my heroes, go to Pugna, I am at a 56% win rate with 32 games. I almost never play Pugna. It's pretty rare. But my win rate's apparently okay. As you can see, I ran him a lot. I play almost every hero. Um, I've been playing a little bit of Arc Warden this week. I think he's really fun to play. Um, but I, I have... I play a lot of different heroes. Most people's Dota buffs don't look like this, I feel. They're very, like, top-heavy, for example. So, uh, that's pretty much Pugna. Oh yeah, one other thing that I didn't point out, his strength gain is awful at 1.2, and his agility gain is awful, but his movement speed is amazing at 330. He's one of the fastest heroes in the game. So, I'm about as fast as a Crystal Maiden is with boots, without buying boots. Very good base damage, 
Uh, the base attack time is pretty good. Your base armor is bad. Um, but that's all right. His attack point's a little bit long. So it takes a little bit long to attack him. All right, so let's hop into the game with Pugna. All right, so I played mid Pugna. Um, I kind of feel like mid Pugna is the only way to play Pugna. Uh, I, I think there is some potential value in support Pugna. I've seen it done before. The old Cloud9 um, played... The the old Cloud9 played... Uh, Played support Pugna and it kind of worked out. They went for a 414 build, um, which I think was the straightforward right way to build it. It was a very. I, I feel like they tried to make it work a bunch of times and it kind of worked, but it wasn't amazing, so never really caught on. But there is some value there. But again, this is a really good game for Pugna, I feel. Again, there's a lot of magic damage from Sand King and Leshrac and Disruptor, and those things kind of counter me. But the Netherwar is also going to do a lot of damage to them. To and the Decrep's going to be amazing against Lone Druid as well as the uh, Wraith King. I think it's going to make a big difference. This item build that I have here is the most common starting item build right now in the pro scene for a mid player. My damage isn't quite displayed accurately. It's actually more like, like low 60s because I have plus 3 damage from the Null and then plus 4 damage from the 2 Fairy Fires. But you get the 2 Fairy Fires because not only is it 75 HP, but it also allows you to just get a bit more right-click damage in terms of last hitting. The battle begins. Mids typically do get the bounty rune, so I grab that. Uh, Yapsor, by the way, he's playing. Uh, he's a pro player. He's on um, Mama's Boys right now. He used to be on Four Clovers, but then the the team switched over. So I missed my block pretty bad. But last hitting with Pugna is actually pretty straightforward in the mid lane. Now I'm against a a Leshrac here. Things about Leshrac are that his animation is really good, and um, his base damage is okay, and he's got a good variety of spells, so I kind of have to worry about laning against him. I should be outlast hitting him, because I actually have about 10 more damage. I kind of abused uh, my spell there to get a last hit, but I think it was a bit of a bit of laziness. At some point, I basically checked and said, like, you know what, I've actually got way more damage than this guy does. I should really be focusing on just last hitting well. And I was playing EU West, though, so keep that in mind. I had like about 160 First ping. It actually hurts you a lot when you're playing mid. Ping is a Tribal huge deal. I was able to get that range creep somehow. That was unexpected. Denied. Bottle first is the go-to for sure. Um, I love Pugna's animation. It looks really cool. I was able to get a blast off on the tower. Again, the, the amount of damage that you do to a tower is, is really amazing. At this stage, though, I'm mostly out of mana, so I can't really continue to spam as heavily as I would like. If you do get some early mana, like a regen or something like that is amazing on Pugna, because you can leverage your mana pool so far, because you have so much mana and you can blast so much off cooldown, that you, if, if your enemy mid ever leaves the lane, you should generally just pressure the tower really hard and try to take the tower. Now, this is kind of a dangerous place to stand, because I don't really know where the last track is, but... And I also am relying too much on blast. I'm over-relying on it to get last hits, because I'm scared. In reality, I should be uh, focusing more on right-clicking. Because now I'm completely out of mana. I've got a bottle, but my mana pool is empty, which isn't very good. So I think I overvalue... I overused um, my my Nether Blast here. On the bright side, I've got a DD now, and the DD will help me get last hits guaranteed over my opponent. And in addition to that, I all, he also can't trade with me anymore at all. There's like no possible way that he's going to be able to last hit or trade hits, since I'm hitting twice as hard. So for now, I stand around. Any free hits I can get on him are great, because it does a lot of damage. And again, Pugna's early damage is very high, so having a DD is very solid. That was really nicely done by Leshrac. I thought he did a great job there. Um, moving around, going for the stun. I didn't adjust my positioning, so I lose some HP from that, but it's okay, because I have a pretty full bottle anyways. Now things are going to normalize a bit more due to the DD being gone. Still playing this lane a little bit too safe, I think. <laughs> but it's kind of hard to trade hits with a Leshrac, right? It's basically not going to happen. The Leshrac is more or less... Again, I'm just being lazy about nukes. I'm using it pretty much every time there's an opportunity, rather than focusing on last hitting. 
there, there isn't even a rune quite coming up, and I kind of wasted all my mana, when in reality I'm going to want to push more heavily in 30 seconds. So I almost never play mid, and I really should play more, because games like these, it's clearly showing that my, my mid ability is a little bit weak. So this is the issue. 20 seconds later, the creeps are going to come, but I would love to have two blasts, so I can double blast the wave and then go get the... Um, unfortunately, my catapult missed there. Two blasts and go get the rune, but... If the Leshrac was a little bit better about mid, um, then he probably would have been able to get the top rune. Or one of the other runes. I ended up running top for this. Get a bounty rune, and of course some bottle charges. Which I'll use to regen my mana just a little bit here. Now that blast I think was a little necessary because there's a chance he would have denied there. Was able to get that tonight as well. That was a nice little advantage for me. Um, unfortunately, I didn't have my boots yet here. I also should have realized that bot rune was going to be something special, right? Because I got a bounty rune top, which means that if the Leshrac disappears, he's going to grab a rune from the bot rune, and I don't know what that is exactly. On the bright side with him being gone, though, I can just focus on last hits, which is nice. Alright, he's back. Now, when somebody's back from getting a special rune, you need to check to see what rune they actually have. And another thing was that my items were full, so I didn't actually pick up... Um, my boots of speed, unfortunately. Now, I still look really fast because I'm at 330 movement speed, but again, I could be running at what, 375. We're trying to set up a gank here. Yeah, he did pop an invis in here. I wasn't quite sure. I just thought he, he zoned us. He's actually standing behind me right now to see where I am, and I just thought that he was gone. But that's just a really bad mistake to make. I did get a lot of last hits at least, so I've got that going for me. I'm just going to decrypt the bear to prevent it from uh, attacking me. But at that stage, if Leshrac 6 and he's going to stun me, I'm just 100% dead. If I had boots, I might have survived, but I was probably screwed no matter what. Biggest mistake was just, it was obvious that he had a rune, and I never clicked on him. That's absolutely unacceptable if you're playing mid. It's really, really important that you click on the enemy heroes, especially when he has a bottle, because that completely changes how things can go. I wouldn't have played that aggressive by the creep wave if I knew that he had an invis, for example. So I gave him a, a really dumb kill that I, I shouldn't have died for. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Back to the mid lane. Uh, when you TP back to lane, it's okay to cast a spell right away because you're spending less mana. If you look at it, I've lost about 50 mana here because I still had some fountain regen. I'm just going to focus on pressuring the lane a little bit here. But by that, I mean pushing. The amount of damage that you do to a tower is insane. It's something like deals half damage to structures, so it's doing that about, what, 170, something like that. It's really good damage, One, 160. Um, Nether Blast is definitely one of the the lowest um, lowest cooldown AoE nukes in the game. It really allows you to farm. This is really dangerous. If he gets a Burrow Strike off, I die, but luckily he doesn't have boots yet, otherwise that would have been out, being out of position. Considering that heroes or the the bear was likely to run the right, I felt like uh, running to meet that. But considering it was just a bear, I wasn't going to make it in time. So instead, I go back mid. I've got about twelve hundred gold here. I think knowing what I know now, I would I should have bought arcane boots here. Um, the problem is that I don't like buying arcane boots on Pugna because um, the best way to get regen mana regen is to buy if you have a lot of int is to buy percentage based mana regen items. I talked about that in the last video. So if you're playing Pugna and you buy an Arcane Boots, your Arcane Boots only gives you as much, gives you the same mana as every other hero. But Pugna needs more mana than that. And if you get a mana regen item, a percentage mana regen item, you get way more regen than most heroes because I've already got 56 int and I'm 7 minutes into the game and I don't have anything, any special int items, right? So I really felt like, man, I don't want to get Arcane Boots. It's just not efficient. But the reality is that there's just not a, not really a lot of other boots that are, that are better. I thought he was going to pressure me there. I really feel like he maybe could have killed me, but... Perhaps I could have done a decrep life drain and not die. Radiance top tower is under attack. Unfortunately, here the uh, the lone druid stole the the bunny rune. That was a little bit unfortunate. And I'm trying to see if we could catch him, but unfortunately he did run southeast, which isn't too big of a surprise. 
I opted to sell my fairy fire here um, instead of eat it. And you can maybe criticize that. Um, is 37 gold better than 75 HP? Not sure. But we're coming over here to pressure the offlane. And I have enough mana to blast this down pretty well. They did glyph it right before my blast. That's one really good way to counteract Pugna. Luckily, Huskar to get the tower. We're waiting to see if we get glimpsed in. Nothing happened, so this means I'm going to go back to base to heal. I'm out of mana. There's no rune, so there's no reason for me to go check for a rune. And now I'm going to heal up. So with point booster, it's kind of a nice item to start off with because it's going to make you way more survivable. The HP that it gives you is really good at 200. And again, you need to make up for that due to your low strength gain. But I still think I should have gone arcane boots. Um, I still think arcane would have been a bit safer just because of the, it gives you a way bigger mana pool and way bigger mana over time. They did kill one druid here, but they got double killed. Lesh Rex is really strong in the early game. Um, Pulse Nova is one of the best damaging abilities for the mana cost. And with all these heroes across the map, I kind of felt like, again, pushy mid, because that's what Pugna does. Does so much tower damage. Do see the Lesh Rex coming. Be a little bit worried about his stuns. Generally the thing is is when he casts lightning on creeps, you have to anticipate the stun afterwards. Arms for the dead. It's basically just rushing Agadim Scepter here. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily say that it's... I really should have checked Lush's uh, items here. He's on the map and I can see him. Radiance middle tower is under attack. Seemed clear that they were going to try to gank me, so I decided to shift back to, uh, to their safe lane to go pressure the tower. And this is something you should do as Pugna, you should move around the map and pressure towers like this. Dyer's middle tower is under I'm trying to use a little bit less mana here. Luckily, the decrep was on him. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. That was a little scary. Power of Pugna works out, though. His right clicks are mighty. I really should have fairy fired any of these times though, and I should have checked their mana pools more. But luckily we were we were able to outplay them and get all those kills, and we burned the uh, ulti of the Wraith King. Fortunately, uh, Leshrac got faceless void, but ultimately I'm sure that fight was worth it. All right, that doesn't that just counts the void dying. But we got a lot of advantage from that fight. Um, decrep ended up being pretty useful. Uh, my blast decrep on the Sanking worked. I was pretty slow with everything, honestly. My, I haven't played Pugna in a long time before playing this game, so I was very slow on everything, but I could have played the game much, much, much better. So I think I'm going to play Pugna more, though. I thought it was really fun. I had a really good time playing this game. Still on my next Fairy Fire here. Just don't feel like using it. I definitely should use it in that fight, though, because I did get below about... I had about 50 HP at the end, and that could have been a right click. But we did see that there was a big stack here, so we moved over to steal it. Probably would have been a good idea to actually nuke that creep wave. Now he's very likely to get the experience from this, but the important thing is that we delay his blink dagger as long as possible. Um, and we basically stole a good 500 gold from him there. Radiance top tower is under attack. I don't know if my decrep there was good or not. It's a bit of a weird fight, kind of just running back and forth. Again, I can decrep it, and what's going to happen? They're all going to run and be like, we have to kill the ward! And it's like, dude, you don't have to force it so bad, guys. It's, it's going to be okay. Anyways, they forced it. Um, we ended up getting a kill out of it, but we did lose the Lich. Yeah. I'm okay with that. Can I click fight recap in time? Yeah, it's basically equal trade, but I got 49 gold out of it. Dyer's Not terrible. Uh, I maybe shouldn't de decrept the, the void, but I think he was going to die anyways, because there were stuns into the uh, Disruptor ulti, in which case he'd be silenced and he wouldn't be able to time walk anyway, so I don't know if that one was really my fault. 
He did take bonus magic damage, but... I did stop a couple Wraith King attacks, so I probably made no difference. I'm gonna go get a Rune here. Actually, I, the ward unfortunately is placed in a position where I can't even see if there is a rune. Radiance middle tower is under attack. So with this, the tower is very, very low. If I get another blast on this tower, I'm probably going to kill it. So I sat far back and I sat to the side. That way I could run in when my I had enough mana. Unfortunately, it survived with literally Radiance 1 HP. And then I stopped to get a last hit, which actually killed me. If I didn't get that last hit there, the, loon, or the uh, Skeleton King wouldn't have gotten his stun off. And then the bear probably went to rooted me until later, and I was 70 gold away from defeat or from blade of That was really frustrating. So basically, I misrep I mis misguessed how much damage I do to the tower. I should have attacked, blasted, attacked. If I would have done that, I would have killed it. So a little bit off there. And then I would have had my eggs finished, and instead it gets delayed. Ah. So. I tried a little bit of a different item build this game. I saw that they had quite a bit of physical damage with Lone Druid and Skeleton King. And one of the issues with standing and life draining somebody is when they just right click you until you die because you have two armor. So with that said, I said, okay, I'm gonna buy Ags and then I'm gonna buy a Veil. Cause I know that if I do more damage to them, I get more life steal. And Veil's a really good item right now since it gives you 22 int and it gives you armor and it gives you HP regen. I like all that stuff. So regretting uh, not decrepping the bear a little bit here. I did get the slow off on the Wraith King though. As soon as the uh, the stun landed on me, I was pretty dead. But we did kill the Leshrac. If you would have done a Burning Spear there, I think we would have killed the bear. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe not. Yeah, probably not. But my mistake there was basically getting too close to the opponents. I ran in too far, and when you're playing Pugni, you have to sit back and you have to react, basically. That's the proper way to play the hero. We'll just accelerate for a little bit here. Either way, I do have my Ags now, so I can kind of just channel that and do a lot of damage. And I like moving in the enemy jungle, especially because we have a lot of heroes here. I wanted to go kill the Disruptor, but he was actually just waiting for the rune. from the Tempest of Battle. And this is basically the next next period of time where I just do a whole lot of dumb shit. It's a little disappointed with how much damage that did, not to mention the fact that it just kind of broke right away. I really thought that I was going to last longer, but it didn't. And now I'm just dead. And Cap's gonna die too. This is all my fault. I shouldn't have tried to kill him. If I if I did go for the blast the uh, the kill, I should have decrep blasted for sure. I just thought he was gonna take way more damage than that. Honestly, that's pretty much it. I was doing 180 damage per second. It's okay. It's uh it was boosted, but it wasn't. Was it, does he have a cloak or something? No, he doesn't. Move you. It just wasn't that much damage. That that straightforward. Which kind of makes sense. You shouldn't be able to just kill somebody because you decrep blast them. You know. Alright, fight happening, I'm gonna try to defend the tower. Dyer's bottom tower has fallen. Dyer's top tower is under attack. I found something cool out about Blade Mail here. It's that if you Dyer's top tower I'll explain after the fight. Attack. Accidentally cast it twice there. Dyer's top tower is under attack. And I really didn't play this, so it came well at all. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Decrep was really nice though. It really made the Wraith King a bit waste uh, useless. Well, something I realized later in this game is that if there's a blade mail up on somebody and you're life draining them, you heal the exact amount that you deal to him because you're healing 100%, right? So if he's blade mailed and I do 100 magic damage to him and he reflects that to me, I'm healing the same amount that he's healing to me. So blade mail doesn't matter for me. If my HP is full, I don't give a shit about blade mail. I'm just doing damage. So as soon as he pop blade mail, I as soon as I decrept him and he blade mailed, I should have immediately immediately started life draining. Maybe I shouldn't blast because I don't life steal from that, but I could definitely start life draining instantly. So I messed that up. 
And I basically said, okay, I want to get Veil because I want to do more magic damage to them. We have a Huskar who's doing magic. We have a Lich who's doing magic. We have a Line who's doing magic. We have a lot of heroes doing magic on our team. I think it'll be useful if I get a Veil on top of that. It's going to give me armor. It's going to give me more mana pool. It'll be useful. Um, upon playing the game, uh, somebody in my chat said that I should have gotten Aetherlands and they were upset about it. And you know what? I think they're completely right. At the time, I was like, eh, I need armor. But I think that I could have justified armor. I could have justified armor by something as simple as, I don't know, Ring of Basilius. Get three armor for 500 gold. Don't hard commit to it. Or maybe buy an Urn of Shadows. Uh, give me mana, it'd be, give me percentage based mana regen, which I would really. Like, if I got an Urn, or if I got a Sage's Mask right now, it would give me an extra 2.1 mana per second. A Ring of Basilius would only give me 0.65, which is a very small amount. See, look at this life drain. Works great. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Now, in this kind of a situation where creeps are following you, I really recommend killing the creeps if you can kill them easily. Because it means that your opponents aren't going to see where you guys are standing. So by killing those creeps, they don't have wards anymore. More or less. d -Krep's just going to enhance the amount of damage he does. So that was fine. Uh, the, from the Burning Spears, that is. If Huskar attacks a bear like eight times with Burning Spears and I decrypt the bear, it's only helping because every bit of magic Radiance damage he takes gets accelerated. So I feel like I've been relatively fortified. useful the last little bit of time. Um, I maybe should have put the Nether Ward over here instead. I think that might have been better. But I really felt, at this stage, I was like, I really need mana. So I think what I should have done instead, I had to just kind of... I maybe should have stayed. The Nether Ward did a bunch, but that's about it. Um, I think what I should have done is gotten Arcane Boots instantly in lane. Arcane Boots, Bottle. Then go Aghanims. Then after Aghanims, disassemble my Arcane Boots to make a, an Aether Lens. That way the range of my Blast is increased. The range on the Nether Ward is increased. The range on Decrep is increased. The range of my Life Drain gets increased. I can sit farther away from allies when they're in trouble, and I can cover them. I can not get caught with less stuns due to my positioning being better, due to Aether Lens being longer. I think the Aether Lens build is just a straightforward way one to uh, one to go. And what I should have done with my empty item slots that I have, just buy a Sage's Mask. It costs 300 gold, and it would have given me a lot more mana. I don't necessarily want to go all the way into something like a the, um, something like a Yule's because it's frankly like farther than I need. It's more money than I need to put into a mana regen item. Um, but I think just something like a Sage's Mask or a Urn would have been plenty good. Like, really, really good. I definitely went way too far into that. Item. I didn't use my veil here, but I should have. And I also should have ulted the, uh... Should have ulted the Huskar. I messed this fight up pretty bad. I don't, I think I turned too fast there. So, um, I think I might, I messed that fight up pretty bad. What I should have done is I should have retreated to the high ground. Here, let me show you guys. Let's go back. Alright, right here. Oops, not right here. Okay, so. Right here. First thing I should have done. Veil this. I would have caught four heroes. I would have caught two illusions. Boom, veil on four. All of our damage gets increased. Another word damage gets increased. It's all increased. Huskar's over here fighting. What I should have done is I should have ran up here. And then I should have healed on the Huskar. Because when you use life drain on an ally, I don't know if I talked about this earlier or not. If you life drain an ally, it costs you HP, but it gives them HP. And Huskar is very important to keep alive. If he stays alive, we kind of just win the fight. So I should have ran up here. And I should have healed the Huskar. Instead, I didn't use Veil. I did like, I tried to kill the, uh, the Wraith King, which I killed, 
but I could have kept the Huskar alive. He had a BKB up, you know? He does, he does more damage to me, and he keeps me protected by him being alive. And here I should have kept running a little bit, gotten high ground, had somebody else do some fighting. And I also should have been ulting the, uh, the Lesh, I think, because I could have killed the Lesh. I don't, looks like he ended up living, and he shouldn't have. So I messed that fight up. Um, we didn't get to Chronosphere there, and maybe there should have been a Chronosphere, but I think Yapster was a little bit busy with not dying on the other parts of the fight. So at this point I was like, alright, I need BKB, right? I'm getting chain stunned. Um, the reality is that I don't think I need a BKB, I think I need an Aether Lens. It's only about 2,000 gold, it increases your magic damage, it gives you HP regen, which is a little bit wasted. It gives you a bigger mana pool, which is a little bit wasted, because I'd rather just have mana regen. But, it's, it's one of the biggest problems with Pugna's build right now, is there aren't a lot of items that you want to build that help out with this, like, Ag's Aether Lens thing, that also give you percentage-based mana regen. Dyer's middle barracks are under attack. Who knows, maybe Yules is a solution. Make you run faster, let you dodge projectile stuns, you know? But it's kind of an expensive item. And granted, I wasn't playing very well here. My net worth is probably not even good. Yeah, I'm about middle of the pack here. I should have at least one more item if I was really playing mid well. So this isn't the best example of a Pugna game and, and the fact that I was rusty and I played poorly in a couple fights. I wanted to see how much damage that did. Um, with the Huskar ult. Um, Huskar ult does 35% of their HP, so if I decrep something, they take about, probably about 60, 60 ish. So that range creep did take a lot of damage. Giving him bottle charges with lands the goddamn rune stealer. I gave him bottle charges because he was missing a little bit of mana and then I was going to grab the bounty. No matter what, usually the support should never take the bounty over a, a core in most cases. A little bit of jungling is very good for, for Pugna. It's another problem with not having the ma any mana regen items. Like, I would literally still have... I mean, I guess I would have Arcane Boots now if I bought Veil, but... Um, as soon as I cast spells, I'm missing mana, you know? That's that's a bit of a problem. I think there's an Invis Lushrek behind us. Should have decrypted him first. There you go. Unfortunately, he drained all of my mana. He interrupted my ulti, so I lost all my mana. I was able to save Yapsor by decrypting the bear, but I had no mana left. I also didn't use my veil during the fight, which I should have. Bottom tower I called for back attack. here because uh, the Leshrac re- Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. And I think at this stage I said it's time to- oh, no, I was still working on BKB. Definitely still working on the BKB. Before you go back to base, it's usually better to spend the rest of your mana to farm before you go all the way. I just want to be clear that I'm not really happy with my performance this game. I think I could have showed a much better Pugna game, but I felt like it was an okay video to make, so that's why I'm here. Next up is BKB. I know I did waste a little bit too much mana on the Lesh, because I started life draining him, then I realized I had decrap, then I cancelled the decrap, then I life drained again. So I lost about 175 mana every time my ulti got interrupted, which is bad. Playing Pugna is kind of like playing Shadow Demon. You have to like know what situations it's good to use your spells in which way. It gets a little bit difficult. And I was like, yeah, whatever, I'll just life drain creeps because 
Then I'm spending 175 mana and they're dying, right? Like, maybe that's better than double blasting. Maybe that is better in some ways, but I'm missing like a third of my mana pool. I just really felt like my item build wasn't correct this game. Maybe the solution's an urn. Not sure. We actually had an urn on Lich, so I could not build one. Um, there's gotta be something, right? Let's close this. Any of these items. Don't really want to make Basilius because it's a static. Oh, I popped a haste here and went off to do something stupid. Chasing a guy. And naturally, their team showed up and I just kind of died. It's very bad of me. Um, I definitely overextended. As soon as the Faces Void got sent back a little bit, I couldn't be covered anymore. Should have been a lot more careful. I also could have dropped my uh, Nether Ward down, but I don't think it would have made a difference. That was a great stomp by Cap there, it stopped the Sand King ult from doing anything. Actually did nothing. Good Chrono. Fortunately that was the te closest TP I could find. Seems like Huskar's still playable, honestly. It's not a bad lineup for him, Sand King. Excuse me, Sand King, Disruptor, Lashrek. The damage against Huskar is not that amazing. Radiant structures are fortified. Radiant's middle tower has fallen. Some Huskar heals here. I did veil this time, luckily. Fortunately, it ran out. I really need another ward here. Man, they all kept getting away. Radiance middle barracks are under attack. I'm sure I did get some mana regen during that fight. There's a lot of cases there where I just needed to decrep somebody before I left and I would have gotten a kill. Like the uh, the Wraith King, I would have blown him up. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. So while Lashrak overdove, the rest of them basically just killed us. Made a mistake here as well, I should have TP'd instantly. Um, they were busy killing the Nether Ward and I could have just teleported them. So I kind of died for nothing here. That was so close. <laughs> that one was really funny. I was like, oh my god, Wolfman's gonna die too. Almost got BKB though. Just watching the game now, it's very clear that BKB is not the issue. Maybe some of the earlier fights it was necessary to have BKB, but at this stage it just doesn't seem like that big of a deal. 
It's like, what, is BKB really going to make or break these team fights? I don't think it will. I think if I if I did this game again from scratch, I would have gone Arcane instantly as soon as I got the gold. And I would have pushed mid like crazy, because then I would have had way more mana regen, or way more mana in the mid lane. Because again, it's it's 300 mana, you know? If you start from full H, if you have like 600 HP and 900 mana, you can blast like like 13 times or something. If I've only got 700 HP, 700 mana, I can blast like 5 times. It's like a massive difference for the amount of mana that you get. So if I just get fast arcanes, I get more pressure in the mid lane. I transition that arcane boots instantly into an Ags, which would be point booster into, st into Ogre Club. Maybe I back off for a moment and I buy an urn if nobody has one. Maybe at some stage, if I'm a, as soon as I make my axe, maybe I get a Sage's Mask and just hold it. Don't have to build it into anything. Um, you could maybe even argue for something like a medallion. I can't. I can't justify the medallion. The medallion would just be so bad. Uh, maybe I could just get a buckler. You know, like something like that. Just buy a buckler and leave it at that. It's 800 gold. That's probably the best thing you could do, honestly. If you just want a little bit of armor. Or, rather than a buckler, just buy, buy the Helm of Ironwall. Like, if I buy Helm of Ironwall, I get 5 armor, which is about what buckler would give me. And it uh, gives me 3 HP regen. I can eventually turn it into a Veil, but I don't have to do it right away. I think doing something like that would be good. So I'd have like Eggs, Aether Lens, um, Helm of Ironwall. I might sell Bottle at some stage. Probably should. Because at some stage you don't need Bottle Regen, right? You can, I can Regen at any point for HP just by using my Life Drain. At any point I can. My team is fighting by Roshir, so I was kind of like, oh, this, this sucks. I was trying to put it on the high ground, but I couldn't. So I put it down. Unfortunately, it's actually outside of range, it looks like. That was very weird. I want to reseed that because my life train stopped working. I was very confused about it. It's like he got moved or something. Because I I don't I couldn't figure out why my life train stopped here. That was very confusing to me. I think what happened was the burrow strike moved the the lash rack or the uh, huskar slightly to the left. So he got moved slightly to the left due to the burrow strike, because when Sankin comes back up, he becomes a model again, and then something or everything around him has to move. So he basically pushed the Huskar slightly to the upper left, which meant that my life drain was then out of range and stopped working. Because I think if my life drain would have gone through there, we could have won that fight, because I would have been giving the uh, Huskar 240 HP per second, which I feel like could have kept him alive, and then he maybe could have killed like two more heroes. I might be wrong on this, but... Um, if I, first of all, I placed my nether ward really bad. I panicked and put it fast rather than waiting until I was around because I thought that I would need it right away, but the Chronosphere bought me time to run around. So I should have saved it until I got closer. That would have done some damage and limited the spells of my opponents a little bit. Um, but the biggest thing was just that my life drain got interrupted on Huskar due to the, the, the Burrow Strike pushing Huskar a little bit far away from me. And I didn't realize instantly that my ulti stopped. I was just going to watch his HP. But you have to be really, you have to pay attention to that kind of stuff. Maybe what I should have done is casted it and then shift queued up another cast. That way if it gets interrupted, it can instantly get casted again. You know what I mean? That way the, the computer would react instead of me having to react. That might have been, might have been better. Anyways, I've got BKB up now. Um, I can now go magic immune while I'm life draining. I don't have to worry about getting burrow striked or epicentered or less track ability. And now since less track has the BKB, I can compete with that a little bit. I'm not quite sure if Aether Lens is the item on Lashrak anymore, by the way. I feel like it's a bit weaker now due to the fact that um, it doesn't give you magic resistance. When it gave magic resistance, I think it's a, a very obvious item that you get on Lashrak, but now I think it's better to just go Octarine Core instead, personally. I think that's a better item. I came way too far up to hit a bear. I did get BKB off. I need to use my Nether Ward. I don't know why I haven't. God damn that I choked there. Can't come up that far to harass a bear. I used decrep on bear, so when the Wraith King went in, I couldn't save the Lich, and then everything just went awful. And I basically just sat there for a second and was like, what do I do? Eventually I casted my ulti, but it's doing almost no damage. I didn't use my veil. I didn't do shit. God, I was flustered this game. 
They got our buildings. They are all dead. Luckily, they can't kill our other buildings very well. They can kill our top two, two towers. Alright, so now I'm like, alright, let's make an Aether Lens. Excuse me. So, I th upon uh, getting Aether Lens, I realized the best thing by far about Aether Lens on Pugna is that you can start putting your Nether Ward on cliffs. Easily the best thing about it. It's very similar to Undying putting Tombstone on cliff by Roche Pit. If you put your Nether Ward on a cliff, if they don't have a ward, they're not going to be able to hit it. And if they don't have a lot of ranged heroes available to hit it, then they can't hit it. So I think the Aether Lens on Pugna is kind of a core item. I really just think if you need some kind of physical survivability, then yeah, you can buy a piece of armor. But the way that I dealt with it was not correct. Um, I needed to just get Aether Lens right away. Not only so my blast range increased, because whenever you blast, it's pretty short range, right? You have to be like less than 400 units away to cast it. So the uh, the blast range would be increased. I could do that more safely. I can put Nether Ward on top of cliffs, and I can decrep from safely. I can decrep somebody without them seeing me where I'm decrepping them from. I can life drain from an extra 200 units away. That's really big because that way, if they run away, it's still gonna last longer. Like if I have Aether Lens at level one life drain, then I'm life draining for up to 1100 units away. And it makes such a big difference. So I'm pretty darn sure that the build now is Arcane Boots, into Agonims, into Aether Lens, into either BKB or an Armor Piece, and maybe grab an Armor Piece in there, maybe grab a Sage's Mask, maybe just leave it at that. Again, a Sage's Mask right now would give me 2.5 mana per second extra. Over 10 seconds, that's 25 mana. Over 100 seconds, that's 250 mana. It's a massive amount of mana. And then I can buy Veil afterwards if I want to. I wouldn't say it's a core item. Um, I think it's an item you can get. It's good this game because I have a lot of magic damage. But if the rest of my team is lacking magic a little bit, I think it's a bit of a waste. Shane went a little super ham here. I really needed to veil here, but I didn't. I don't know why. Again, I just played this fight really bad. Nothing about it. Every fight I just got so flustered. Just don't play Pugna enough. My defense, this was like 3 p.m. and I hadn't eaten anything since breakfast, so... I usually play way bad if I haven't eaten. Now one way you can deal with illusions when you're playing Pugna is just by ulting them. It functions the same that um, Lion's Mana Drain does against illusions, it's technically the same mechanic. Look at that damage man. When you actually have Veil and Decrep it does a lot. So we had a bit of a good fight there. Um, I was able to deal with the Lit or the the um, Wraith King very easily. Nice TP by Lion or by uh, Lone Druid there. Also kept my mana pool really full because I was at full HP the whole time Wraith King was taking damage, so that was very nice. I would have loved to go bot racks, but unfortunately we couldn't really because there weren't creeps. I also bought my Arcane Boots, so my mana pool is a little bit more full. I'm standing here because I'm waiting for the creeps to spawn, that way we can push the wave in. Radiance top tower has fallen. Octarine Core is also a great item that Pugna can grab. Um, it gives you lifesteal based on the damage you do. 
Um, so if you're life draining somebody and they have Blade Melon, you actually heal 25% rather than nothing. So that helps. Um, the lower cooldown on things like Nether Ward can be nice. But the main real benefit, I think, is for Decrep. Goes from a 6 second cooldown to a 4.5. You pop BKB there to prevent getting sent back. Decrep's low cooldown, Nether Blast is low cooldown. The cooldown doesn't matter for your ult, but you're getting lifesteal from everything. So it helps you stay alive. If they have a few stuns, it can work out really nice. I was asking for last hits because I wanted to finish my my item. And I was gonna TP back for here. I have to sell my bottle. Unfortunately, we kind of got wrecked while I was gone. And I was going to run for that, but it just looked like there was no way. They have so many stuns, honestly. They've got Burrow Strike, they've got Split Earth, and they've got the Wraith King Fire, Wraith Fire Blast, and they have an Abyssal on Wraith King. So Wraith King stuns for 2 seconds, Sand King stuns for 2 seconds, Last Strike stuns for 2 seconds, and then he has 2 seconds left until he gets stunned again. That's basically what their cycling is. They can stun an, amen, uh, an amazing amount of times. So I tried to put the Nether Ward over here in the trees, and I'm just trying to limit their damage. Aether Lens making a big difference. I should have bailed that. Was able to kill the bear. Dyer's bottom barracks has fallen. Yeah, you can see that with Aether Lens and level 3 ult, it, it's really far. I definitely should have bought Aether Lens right after the X. Would have made a big difference. To the actually, almost all the net worths in this game are pretty close. But considering how low my net worth was, I feel like I actually did do a lot this game. Push this out just a little bit. Hex is another really good item that Pugna can farm, but um, if you're not buying it first, I'm not a huge fan. So here's the old ward on the high ground trick. They actually weren't in rush anymore. It's a really poor... First of all, I decrapped to try to break Lincoln's, but it was already gone. And then my positioning was really bad. Shane completely saved me here. I did veil this time. to keep cap alive here and then once I get a little bit low I can heal up again Splay Mel turned on though so I stopped getting healed I think that was the first fight that I actually felt really good about um, Shane did a really good job keeping me alive through the chainstun um, I ended up surviving I used Veil, I decrept the Wraith King, I ultied him, and all of a sudden I was full HP. Like, instantly full HP, and then Cap got in a little bit of trouble, and I healed him for like a thousand HP. And then I was like, oh, I'm kind of low now, well, let's go heal Lifesteal again. So then I decrept the, the Wraith King, and I started Lifestealing. Now him turning his Blade Mill on there was actually really important, because it prevented me from healing. If I'm full HP, it doesn't matter. But if I'm at half and I'm healing, I want to heal, right? So if I would have been able to heal more on Wraith King, I might have been able to stay alive and ultimately fight the Leshrac. I did get my Nether Ward down again, so it was ultimately a very good fight, and I think I accomplished a shitload. In fact, I just want to hop back a second and look at damage. So look at the damage done this fight. I did almost as much as Huskar did, but he's got like 50% more net worth than I, than I do. I did more damage than Leshrac did because I just kept chewing through Wraith King's HP. It worked out really, really nice. Now, I totally think that Wraith King probably should have bought a BKB. He doesn't really want to have to do that. But if he just buys BKB, he could deal with me easier. Yeah, it, I would just decrap whoever he goes on and then that person doesn't die. But I think it would have made a difference, personally. I don't know, it's kind of a hard situation for him. Does he buy it and then get Chronosphered? 
or I mean it doesn't really make him that much stronger against Huskar, it stops the burning spears and stuff, but it would be kind of a waste there, right? So I, I, don't, I don't know man, this this felt pretty good. Once I had Veil, Aether Lens, Ags, like I am I was doing a lot of damage here. I'm doing 300 magic damage a second with life drain. And that gets increased by 8% with Sp uh, Aether Lens, which means... So I was doing about 324 life drain damage, and I life steal on that. Um, I just uh, life drain those two range creeps because we wanted to push, and I wanted to make sure that creep wave pushed so we couldn't get split very well. Um, anyways, so I'm doing like 324, plus the Veil is increasing it by about 25%. Plus, Decrep's increasing, Decrep is increasing the damage by like 60%. Overall, we're talking a shitload of damage. It's not bad. This build is not bad. I still think I still think Pugna's a little undervalued. Um, and I think he's still a little bad. He's not, he's not a competitive, viable hero yet, I don't think. And he's very situational about when you can pick him. But I think he's he's almost good, and I had a lot of fun playing in this game. It's kind of like playing Shadow Demon, like I said before. You have to decide when it's the right time to decrypt. So I was trying to see if I could get away with uh, dropping the Nether Ward here into a bunch of trees, but the range is just a little bit too far here. So I'm going to have to unfortunately go with the boring stuff. Great Aetherlands there. He pistoled himself. Why, I really should have my nether ward down, but I don't. And I should have saved cap there, I think. A little bit of life still here from a bear. Alright, mana is getting a little bit low here. Look at that mana gain. It's so good. God, I got so much mana from that. Fight recap. Damage done. Oh, that was just for two kills. And now we just basically win. Um, but it was a fun game. Really fun game. His blade melt prevented me from healing again. Now I'm kinda out of mana. I can't do anything. Really good burrow. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Radiance Ancient is under attack. I think Shane did really good this game. So, my very early Pugna game was okay. My mid game Pugna game was awful, and my late game I thought was pretty good. I mean, like, just watching the late game and seeing what Pugna's capable of, man, it's, it's really fun. So, that's Pugna. Um, Sorry I kind of zoned out there, but it's just so fun to watch all the options and like things like that. My decision making was pretty good at the end. The, the, the main thing comes down to use your freaking Veil. If you buy a Veil, you have to use it. Veil, Decrep, Ulti, and kill somebody. And I have to another word before any of that starts. And occasionally I need to do Decrep, Blast, Ulti before I do that because it's just extra damage. So, But sit in the back. Like you can see it at the end. I was so far away from Husker, but I could keep him alive. Now I think they, they kind of messed up in the fact that they should have been pressuring more. Like Epicenter the back line instead of me. But I'm sure the um, 
the nether ward made that a little scary and i think shane played that game amazing he kept us alive a lot he had great items um yeah he did great anyways that's pug i hope you guys enjoyed uh i will see you guys later i'm probably gonna stream today i'm casting canada cup tonight at 5 30 p.m it's the best of three i think it's a pretty important match too we're, we're nearing the end of that so if you guys want to tune into that you can other than that just go hang on my stream wait for that to start and i will see you guys there in i don't know it's probably going to be up before this vod even goes up so i'll see you guys there see you guys bye